in the in the first two months starting the carnivore diet myself two years ago, I literally felt unbreakable, invincible. It was it, it was mind blowing, L- like crazy, and especially in sports on other sides as well, mental sleep, en- energy, less uh, glucose spikes, uh, anything. It was it was crazy. I was let's say perfectly fine at the time, but I obviously didn't know that I could be with much better on many many different levels. On the psychological side, but also on the on the guts, uh, on guts issues, on on anything, I was perfectly fine and healthy at the time. But I was just curious, and obviously, I wanted to improve different things. Rolling here, right. yeah, that's perfect. I think. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Happy uh, Tuesday morning. We have a, 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 s- a special guest today. Antoine is going to share his uh, success story with us. I apologize. I was a few minutes late. I had to put a steak in the in the, uh, <laughs> in the sous vide. I was running by and I didn't want to forget that. So my apologies, Antoine. Uh, welcome. Good to have you here. Where, where are you located? What part of the world are you in? Thank you, Dr. Baker. Um, I'm, I'm in Brussels at the moment, in Belgium. It's the Belgian uh, capital. Mm-hmm. I used to live in in the southwest of France, and uh, and now I just moved back to to my uh, to my my first city, uh, Belgium in Belgium. Got it. Yeah, I've been to Belgium a few times. I've been been to Brussels and uh, what southwest of France near like uh, what maybe Biarritz or something like that, Narbonne yeah. or something somewhere in there. Yeah, exactly. I was living uh, in Cap Ferret. It's a little surf town just next to Bordeaux on the coastline, and I'm passionate about, about surfing, so that was really nice. Very nice. Awesome. Well, glad to have you here. Uh, I, I am basically married to a French woman, so I, I hear a lot of French all day, every day. <laughs> I, I, I understand a lot of yelling at kids in French. That's that's my my <laughs> extent of my French knowledge. But anyway, well, welcome. Well, I guess let's just maybe just tell us a little about yourself, your background, and then we'll get into your kind of success, if, if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks. Thanks a lot for having me. I really, uh, really appreciate that. Um, to give you a little bit of uh, a background about myself, um, I'm Belgian. Uh, I grew up in, in Brussels, which is the capital of Belgium. Uh, I'm a French native, uh, native speaker, as you can hear. Um, I studied a little, bit, a little bit in English, but uh, haven't practiced a lot for for quite a quite a few years. So you will apologize my, my poor English, but I think that'll be fine. Um, I've been um, I've been doing a lot of sports. I'm really passionate about, um, especially surfing. That's why I moved to to southwest of uh, of France six years ago, and then I just moved back now, uh, mainly for work here in in Belgium. Um, During my childhood, many, many sports. I used to do a lot of soccer, especially a lot of uh, field hockey, grass hockey. It's pretty famous here in in, in Holland, in France, but especially in Germany and Belgium and England, uh, also in in India and in uh, New Zealand and Australia. Um, And many of my friends have played in the... um, like a professional, they've won uh, the World Cup, the the gold medal at the Olympics and stuff. So I grew up in a, a really really sports uh, sporty um, environment. Um, went to university here in Brussels in Belgium, studied the f- psychology for five years, and then another master's degree in philosophy and a third one in sociology and anthropology. So pretty much 10 years at university, I did a bit of research too in a lab, in a social social science lab. And then um, I had to start my career and earn a bit of money uh, <laughs> to know the real world, kind of. And I was a little bit disappointed with the research and the academic uh, world as well. So um, for personal reasons as well, I discovered the... Um, uh, I struggle a little bit with the word, and, and the words are, are not always, um, they are prisons in a way, if you know what I mean. But um, I discovered the gifted and the hypersensitive themes uh, close to autism, and at least that, that talks to um, people that feels to be different on many different ways, behaviors, emotions, 
uh, also neurological and also obviously about their diet and many other stuff. So I discovered it myself and that was a pretty mind blowing discovery. I really discovered myself through that and I was really happy because I really could um, mix my professional interest with the psychology, the philosophy and the social science with a personal experience. And that really was, uh, was something. And then I worked in this field. I worked as, um, as a psychologist for, for six years for the gifted children and the gifted adults, but also in the broader scales, because I'm really not in that IQ, IQ thing and stuff. I really see those people and their visions of the world uh, in a much broader understanding. Um, to me, they are just different on a physiological, genetical, and behavioral standpoint. So, um, so I also work with hypersensitive people, and that's mainly uh, mainly my word. If if I have to, if I would have to, to choose one, um, did that. And recently, just a year ago, I launched uh, a podcast, and and that's about it. I'm really involved in into sports as well, into cold therapy. I have another a third side project about that, but it's only the start, so I'm not gonna tell you a lot about that uh, yet. That's that's about it. Okay, and you know when you say uh, hypersensitive people, I'm just kind of curious. What what maybe you could talk a little bit more yeah. about? That. What do you mean by hypersensitive? Yeah, it's, like it's easily, like we have this easily offended group class of people, but I mean, is there something? Is there some other definition? Yeah. That? Yeah, exactly. No, but uh, that, that's the point. And, and it's, it would, it's going to be a little bit harder to talk about that, about it in English, but I think it'd be a right to stay. Uh, I mean, I will stay a, a bit general, but to answer you, um, what I mean by that, I mean, what I mean, it's what I describe, the reality I describe is um, many people, much more than we expect, it's still to me and to what I, I see from the world, a min minority, um, but according to me, it would touch um, many people, but differently according to their personality, their background, their past experiences and stuff. But what a neuroatypic, that's another word I use, or let's say hypersensitive people is a child or, or an adult. Um, it's someone that, that was born with a nervous system that is much more sensitive than the average, than the norm on a soci social sociological uh, standpoint. So obviously we are not part, we, we are all part of the same species. Well, we are all human comparing to animals. That's a fact. But in, a, in the same way, we are all different. But with those two statements, it's hard to explain why some people struggle with certain things, certain things, for example, at school, at, at work, uh, with their emotions, uh, anything for a burnout, for, for some diseases, especially mental diseases, but also for the diet, et cetera, et cetera. You can't explain with, we are, everybody is different and everybody is the same or, um, or, or from the same species. You can't explain the struggles that some people live or an experience and some others obviously don't live and don't struggle and don't complain about. So what I'm doing is just, um, just hearing and listening and putting all those experiences together and trying to articulate it in a world vision from different human profiles. That's about it. And the hard struggle, just to, just to end with this, is that most of the people that are or that were born different, that are pretty much wide different, they have different behaviors, dif different emotions, different anything, different sensitivity about their eyes, their skin, that affects anything because to me, at least to me, it's genetically, it's another layer is obviously neurologi neuro neurological and another layer is obviously 
uh, emotions, emotionally and behaviorally. But the hard thing or the, uh, the hard tr truth, if I may say, is that the majority of those people, which is a minority from the, the whole world, but still a lot of people, those people often they don't, they don't know about their difference. And what causes their struggles is, if I can say it generally or broadly, die stress, distress, so negative stress, because there is also a positive stress, according to me, and that accumulates. And this stress can cause them illness, uh, eczema, psoriasis, uh, even um, diseases with their guts, different kind of sensi sensitivities. It's a little bit, it's exactly the same argument that you take with the carnivore and with the diet, just to eliminate the inflammation. But I take it from a psychological standpoint. And what really matters to me is to mix your huge and incredible argument with the diet and with all the, this understanding with the same kind of argument or mental scheme or reality, understanding of the reality, but from a psychological standpoint. And just to end with this, is that those people that ignore or don't know or forgot kind of thing, their difference, they start to build years after years a um, false self-identity. They play roles, especially socially at work and at school. And my work is helping them to understand their difference and their identity, not to force into the... Um, into a fake identity, if I may say. That's about it. Yeah, interesting. I mean, there's, you know, there's a well-described concept of the somatoform disorders where, you know, people that are under stress will show up in different physical manifestations, gut pain, you know, so on and so forth, you know, so and, and stress we know is a driver of disease. I think that's pretty clear, heart disease and so on and so forth. So how does, you, you mentioned nutrition a little bit. So I guess, I guess I get into, um, uh, I guess do you have do you have your own personal sort of story that you that you share, or is it, or do you or do you also apply this to your to your your I guess your clients and stuff like that? I guess we would talk about that a little bit. Yeah, um, there's two things. Um, obviously, I'm starting to apply this uh, with my clients, but because I'm not a, doc a doctor and I'm l I'm less legit than I am on the psychological standpoint. Um, it's, it, it's slowly building, but, uh, it's only the start, but obviously I'm really interested, really involved. And that's why I read your book and, and many other books and stuff about that. And, and, and that's about it. But there, there is, I mean, I'm sure I have, I have seen it many, many times. There is a huge benefit, a huge improvement, but like a crazy improvement just only working and changing people's or my clients diet even on the psychological side and i'm pretty sure i'm not gonna be too much about it uh right now at the moment at least but um there is a huge impact of many many mental disease if not all of them but that's a question an open question i i i just i just mentioned on the other side, from a personal uh, experience, I don't know if you, you you want me to talk about that or, or just. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it'd be wonderful. And I will say, you know, just on the on the mental side, I mean, we, I've seen tremendous mental health benefits from from people adjusting their diets. You know, Chris Palmer has got a book basically, essentially, effect based on that and a few other things. And uh, so it's becoming more and more recognized that metabolism and nutrition, how that impacts it, clearly impacts. Uh, our brain physiology, mental health, cognitive health, you know, all the, you know, mood disorders, so on and so forth. So, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's becoming more and more accepted, even though, you know, even five years ago, you, you were considered a heretic saying, hey, nutrition can help people with depression. But, but now I think that's, I think that's going to become mainstreamed soon. So let's talk about you, maybe your own personal uh, journey, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. 100% agree with what you said. Um, on the personal side, um, 
it's been two years that I've discovered your podcast on Joe Rogan's uh, show. And that's been mind blowing on many, many different levels. So, so thank you. Thanks a lot for that, uh, Dr. Breaker. And thanks to Joe Ro Rogan as well. Um, huge uh, inspiring fi figure for me. But um, yeah, just after that, I bought your book. And so it was two years ago and I tried it myself. By myself, um, I just try to, to to learn and to listen to your YouTube channel, uh, to your book and and some other uh, other stuff. I did six months of pure carnivore diet, and then I switched to another six months of keto with a little bit of fruit diet, but still heavy on meat, really heavy on meat. And then for the past years, for the past year, um, I've been, I've tried two more months on the a pure carnivore diet. And for several reasons that we can talk uh, um, together as well, uh, it's been 10 months that I'm on um, my understanding or what I say is, I call it a carnivore base or an animal based diet. And I add a little bit of carbs, a little bit of fruits, especially in the form of fruits, um, mainly because uh, for several reasons that I experience through the strict carnivore diet, leg cramps, uh, poor sleep a little bit, uh, and some other stuff, even though the experience was mind-blowing on many, many, many levels. And then I decided to add some fruits. And I got to be honest, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm 34 years old. And I haven't been like that, and it's still the beginning. Well, I mean, that's I mean, that's that's wonderful, and I think you know what, what, what the way I approach carnivore diet is is a therapeutic tool, and you use it as long as you need it. And some people, like myself, prefer just prefer it and and do it as a long term sort of, I guess I call it a lifestyle type of thing. But I mean, you use it as a therapeutic tool, and then you adjust it as needed. And so, and you continue to do that. I mean, you'll you I mean, as life goes on, you'll find that some things are beneficial for you some things aren't and you do that but i mean what were you dealing what what prompted you to do it in the first place were you having some difficulty somewhere yeah in the in the first two months um starting the carnivore diet myself two years ago about two years ago i literally felt unbreakable invincible it was, it, it was mind-blowing like crazy and especially in sports because i'm really into it uh, mainly into endurance sports, but other sports, sports as well, especially surfing at the time. But uh, on other sides as well, mental sleep, uh, ener energy, uh, less uh, glucose spikes, uh, anything. It, wa it was crazy. And after a month and a half or two months of pure carnivore diet, and my reason is, might be, my understanding might be because I don't eat i struggle to eat too much and on the side i exercise a lot like a lot for example yesterday i just went for three hours run in the cold shirtless uh here it's about eight degrees celsius so it's pretty cold and it, it's pretty taxing so i need i, I quite need some cal calories that's my understanding but you will tell me uh, if, if that's the the right the right uh, understanding of it and just to get back to the, to the experience two months in the carnivore diet i experienced a little bit of a leg cramps poor sleep feeling a little bit lethargic during the day like i was missing an extra gear exactly like joe rogan um, experienced after his month of uh, of the carnivore diet um i was missing an extra gear especially in sports because i like to push a lot and I was missing, so yeah, so there was a little bit of a of a struggle, but a little bit. And I tried to supplement with uh, electrolytes. Uh, I tried to eat more to change some other stuff. I also took um, a coaching session with you, but after a few months, go back and forth from keto or from heavy on meat with a little bit of fruit, and then back to carnivore and and trying to 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 make it work for me especially with the sports and the fitness and the sweat and, and, and my, my, my profile, what works best, at least for the moment, 
is adding just a little bit of carbs, especially after those really long uh, exercise sessions. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Um, I guess, the, I mean, not after, but why did you choose a carnivore diet several years ago? What was going on? Like, were you struggling with health issues before you even did that? Or was it just purely as an experiment to see what it would do to your athletic performance? Not at all. I was, let's say, perfectly fine at the time, but I obviously didn't know that I could be with much better on many, many different levels. But uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm on the psychological side, but also on the on the guts, uh, on guts issues, on on anything. I was perfectly fine and healthy at the time, but I was just curious, and obviously, I wanted to improve different things the psychological because it's always a, a thing that i'm really interested in but also the physical thing through sports and other stuff so yeah i was curious and i just wanted to to try something else and your arguments through the joe rogan podcast seemed um i would say 100 percent logical yeah so that made sense so objectively you know you're, you're relatively healthy it's like let me see if there's a, there's something here and you, you do this objectively maybe through athletic performance or you said psychologically what things improve you said you were bulletproof so what what do you what what objectively got better for you it's hard to say because it was it was literally everything my sleep got much better i needed to sleep less i could sleep less like seven hours and usually i'm a really heavy sleeper i recovered soreness and feeling tight after those long endurance sessions, nothing, nothing anymore. Um, I used to feel a little bit, uh, to have a little bit of back pain through to surfing because of surfing that was gone, completely gone. Um, not even talking about my energy and my motivation at work, but anything throughout the, the day. And <laughs> the funny thing is that there are so many huge improvements, and I'm going to label others just in a, in, in a minute, but there are so many that it, it was so mind-blowing and, and, and such a paradigm shift that I think I just realized that I could push way more. And because I could push way more in many different areas, but especially in sports, I think I kind of exercise too much, even though I'm not really, I mean, a, a, bit, a bit hesitant about talking about um, over overtraining and those kind of stuff. I'm not sure about that, but obviously you need some calories and you need to feel the, to feel the, yeah, to feel the, cal- the, the burning energy. So what, what, what else uh, did improve? Um, no fatigue. Uh, my skin got better, more elastic um nicer too uh less sunburned as well uh what else i could say um my hair my nails grew quicker and were seemed healthier obviously no bloating no nothing the guts went crazy good and i kind of became allergic to any carbs and especially to vegetables and a little bit less but still um, to fruits. Um, so that was an experience um, from drinking beers, for example. After a couple of months through a, a pretty pretty strict uh, carnivore diet, I had a party. I think it was a wedding or something like that. And I drank a few beers at that night. Um, and I couldn't sleep after. And it wasn't because of the Red Bull or the energy drinks. I don't drink that or really rarely, and at that time I hadn't, I hadn't drink that, it was because of the glucose spikes. And it was crazy, I couldn't sleep. So for let's say 40 hours, I didn't sleep. Just because I drank a few beers, and I think according to my understanding, the, the glucose spikes was so high that I was just red, my face was red, I, was, I couldn't sleep. Um, what else? On the sports or athletic performance, uh, it increases a lot, like a lot. I, I really feel like I, I could run for days, not for hours, for days. And for some days, 
I felt literally on a sports standpoint, invincible or unbreakable. Some runs or some surf sessions at the first hour, I'm just telling myself, okay, I, I, I could surf for eight hours there under the sun, with the salty water, with anything. And that was, that was a truth. That, that was a fact. I almost did, did some, some crazy challenge or, or stuff like that. But afterwards, after a couple of months, those days were some days and some other days I felt a little bit lethargic, like cramps and other stuff. So that, that was about it. There's, I'm sure there are some many other stuff I'm not mentioning, but there's just, just so many. Fair enough. I mean, uh, that, you know, particularly, uh, you know, recovery athletically, that's something I, I'd know, you know, I've been talking about this for years when I was breaking world records and rowing. I was like, look, I'm clearly recovering better and performing better. And other people doubted that. And I've seen it multiple, multiple times. We just saw a, a guy break the world record of rock climbing, at El Capitan, five hour climb. He broke the five hour mark. So that's, I mean, that's obviously an endurance activity and does that on carnivores as well. Um, You'd mentioned, you know, obviously you're excited about the psychological aspects. That's what that's what you do. How do you how do you anticipate uh, nutrition having a role in in there? I mean, you said you're convinced that it's going to have an effect. What what convinces you that? Uh, the reality, my experiment, and the experiment I I, I took with uh, with with my clients and some friends. But before that, before trying carnivore. I didn't expect this at all. Not at all. I wasn't aware of that. No, nothing. Throughout my whole psychology uh, studies and even my readings and stuff, nothing. Didn't hear about that. I, I didn't even realize that the impact could have been so big. Yeah, and so... Uh... It seems to be. It seems to be pretty pretty big in that regard. So, um, you know, you you know, like you mentioned, you're doing three hour runs. Obviously, that's not something that most people do. Most people are not, you know, pursuing that much. <laughs> I don't. I don't have time. I unfortunately don't have time to to, to exercise to that degree. But um, do you uh, find that? Uh, well, I mean, you're in. You were in the south of France, southwest of France, and now you're in Belgium. Any, did you have any difficulties pursuing this diet? I mean, I was in France in August and I, I got, I had no problem with meat, but I mean, any, any challenges to, to do that where you're located? No, in France and in Belgium, it's, uh, it's, it's really easy. I would say the only stuff is, uh, when you're young, quite young, it's difficult for the, the social thing, uh, especially in Belgium because the beer is so big here and, <laughs> For example, you go to the restaurant or even after a hockey, a hockey match or, or anything like that. Most of the young, young players drink beers after the match. So, so that could be a little bit challenging, but except, except that, um, from the shopping standpoint, there is no problem at all. The meat quality is really good. I eat mainly beef and, and eggs and I switch to chicken or pork or bacon or, or seafood from time to time, but that, that, that's about it. And I add a little bit of fruit just to have that, uh, six gear. You know, as far as, um, I don't know if you share how, how much you weigh and, and how much you can. Yeah. yeah. I'm, um, and that, that's, uh, not a problem, but that's something I, I want to work on. And, and that was, a the other topic. I was talking to you. Um, I was mentioning when uh, we had our coaching session together, um, and I want to dive a little bit in that uh, in in the near future. I want to improve in uh, in my fitness and 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 put a little bit of weight. But um, I'm one meter eighty five centimeters, so pretty much six one. I'm seventy six or seventy seven kilos. Um, and I eat as much as I can. Actually, the, the 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 trouble could be that I don't eat enough, according to the, to the exercise I do. But uh, that's about it. My my scale just says that I'm between seven and eight percent body fat, but I'm suspecting a little a subtle problem because I just eat just what I want, 
and in the quantity that uh, until I'm full. But uh, yeah, I'm in the best shape of my life. And yeah, that works. Uh, how has this impacted those around you, friends, family, coworkers, anybody been inspired or disgusted by what you're doing perhaps? Yeah. Um, it, it's really, there, there are, there, there's two categories. Um, some people get inspired and obviously I've talked to, to that way, uh, to quite a lot of, uh, of friends or clients and they had some huge or crazy changes. For example, my girlfriend, it's crazy for her as well. She's much more healthy than she, she used to be, but there's also other people and they could be quite, 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 quite a lot. And sometimes a little bit annoying, but that that's how the world world works. Um, and that's fine. But, uh, yeah, those people get a little bit annoyed or even really surprised, just surprised, just that I eat mostly beef and meat and from time to time, uh, a little fruit and, or, or something like that. All right. Fair enough. Um, let me ask you, uh, as far as <clears throat> you said, you had all, all kinds of benefits, uh, you know, specifically, you know, when you, when you think about your clients, you see the, the, the neuro, neuro atypical people, I guess is the word, you know, some people neurotypical or atypical. Um, how do you foresee, cause you said you think it'll work. What do you foresee doing with that and how much, how much challenge do you have? Because I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to convince someone to change their diet who doesn't really have any interest in changing their diet, you know? How do you how do you how do you how do you foresee proceeding with that? Yeah, it's hard. It, it, it's not easy, and as I said, uh, mainly also. I mean, also because um, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist, even though I read quite a lot about it and I experienced some 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 stuff uh, personally. But but yeah, that could be challenging. But it's it's kind of sad, uh, even though I'm working on, I'm working on it, uh, and and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna um, let them down. But um, yeah, that could be challenging, and and that's kind of sad or or difficult because I'm I'm sure that for many psychological troubles, issues, small and and, and important, whatever. Um, Changing their diet could be, to me and to my understanding right now, I think the biggest or the quickest, I would say, um, shortcut to help them on the psychological side. So, so that would be really, really great if I could put 100% of my patients on a carnivore diet, at least for six weeks, and then adjust some other stuff. Um, and work on the psychological side on the side, obviously, week, week after weeks. But uh, that's not the case yet. Um, I'm working on it. Do you, I mean, I don't know if you even collect this data, but I mean, when you're seeing, you know, a psych psychology patient, um, are you assessing what their current diet is? And, and if so, do you see any commonalities? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm really, I mean, I, I um my eyes work uh, work work pretty well if, if you know what i mean not on a literal standpoint but even though also but uh, what i mean by that is that um even people on the street i can i can almost predict what they eat on a daily basis according to their to their health their, the way they walk the way they they gesture their, their body fat composition and and anything like that so yeah I assess their diets, um, my pa patients' diets, at the beginning of our sessions, pretty regularly. But um, but as I said, it's 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 obvious at the end of the day. So the goal is just to make their their uh, to make them want to change that, and it's not easy. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, obviously, if you see someone who is struggling physically, I mean, and they're sick physically, whether it's due to obesity or some other very obvious in inflammatory condition, then, then likely their brain is being affected as well. It's not that, you know, these sort of disease props are just isolated in one, one component and don't affect us, you know, 
you know, throughout our, our whole body. So it's, I think it's a fair, maybe a fair assessment. You know, I mean, it's, you know, when you go to the grocery store and you see people that obviously aren't doing well and you look in their cart and it's, you see a lot of common. And I think, it's, you know, at least in the U.S., it's usually just, you know, poor nutrition, ultra, a lot of ultra processed kind of, you know, low value, you know, nutritionally yeah. value food that I see over and over again. Um, let me ask you as far as, uh, you know, you said biggest problem for you is not eating enough. Why do you think that is? I mean, what, what just, why not just eat some more? <laughs> I don't know. That, 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 that's, um, that's my thesis right now. And as I, sh- as I said, I'm just experiencing all this stuff on a personal standpoint. So I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not a, as experienced as you are, and I don't have the scientific arguments, uh, the, the solid base just to, to explain that rationally, to explain what I, I experience on a daily basis with my diet and my performance or physical performance. But um, to my understanding, my, uh, I would say I could feel that there is something about the testosterone and the um, and the lack of, uh, I mean, not eating enough calories or something like that. I could see throughout all the arguments I, I, I've read about the, um, about, uh, about the, the exper- experiments um, from many, many people through your podcast and, uh, and other stuff um, about people trying the carnivore diets and, and having to do some, some little subtle changes, especially for the, the athletes. That's what... I'm guessing, but I don't know. You tell me. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think one of the struggles that people do have, you know, I mean, it, it can be a boon for people that are trying to lose weight because it does have this sort of satiety effect. And, but, but, you know, when you're, when your goal is to gain weight, it can, it can be more challenging to, to, to consume just meat and get, get enough calories to support high levels of activity plus trying to put on muscle at the same time it's it's you know it takes a little bit of extra work um do you um you know what is the climate like in french in you know because you're in french i guess you're in french speaking belgium and france i mean uh yeah. is willing i mean i know i know i think somebody from france has bought the rights to translate my book into french so maybe there'll be a french agent for french language version of it finally i know but for some reason there's a german one and a hungarian one and no other languages have translated it yet but um do you find that most people in france have another this is not going to be something that's accepted um the french people are hard and they're pretty pretty sure pretty convinced about their 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 stuff um <laughs> that that's how we Belgian um, look at them, even though we are we are mostly friends, and and it's all good. But um, no, I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm hundred percent sure it would be mind blowing for the French as well as well as for the the Belgian people to have your book translated in French. That th- there's no doubt about that. There's for sure a huge community of athletes, but also of obese people or sick people or men- mental issues people that would love to see your your arguments ex- explained and detailed in French uh, without the struggles with the translation for some people that don't speak uh, English, obviously. So, no, I would be really, I mean, that would be really, I think, uh, I'm pretty sure about that, yeah. And that would be new because according to what I know, there's only one fitness coach that, talks a little bit about carnivore diet about his personal experience and me and that's about it for the whole belgian and and french uh, territory i would say talking about the climate um it's a little bit different because i used to live in the southwest of france which is a little bit smoother and 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 warmer but in belgium here um in the summer it's all right you can get 25 degrees sun out uh, pretty sunny and, and quite nice for, let's say, from June to September. But during the whole winter period here in Brussels, in Belgium, it can get pretty low, not crazy low, but pretty low, around zero degrees, I would say. It tends not to freeze uh, like it used to be, but uh, yeah, above, yeah, around zero degrees, a little bit more sometimes. So 
yeah, that's all right. But it rains quite a lot, and and there's a little bit of wind. But that uh, I mean that that's good. It's, it, it's mainly the light to me. I mean to me being exposed and having the chance to to to, to be to be exposed to sunlight many many hours every day. That's the, that's the the biggest or the, the, I mean one of the best luxury I could uh, I could I, I could. Uh, I could pay myself. I've been traveling to to Los Angeles uh, in August, just a few weeks ago, and that that's been. I mean, it's crazy. It's a it's a great uh, climate. Yeah, they well. I mean, I I, I don't people realize the latitude. I mean, I think Belgium is in Canada. You know, on on the same latitude lines as, as Canada, so it's going to be a little bit certainly a little chillier than than uh, a lot of people might be used to. Um, you know, as far as uh, we've seen a lot of stuff coming out of various, you know, it's going to be interesting in the different different areas of Europe that have responded. I mean, Italy has announced they're not going to be allowing fake meat products, synthetic meat in their country. Uh, however, you've got places like the Netherlands, you know, which is, you know, your neighbor saying we're going to call, you know, shut down 3,000 farms. You know, this is all in response to, uh, you know, climate change related policy i suppose and sometimes you know you wonder if the policy is worse than the problem uh which could be an issue how is belgium responding to that are they talking about restricting meat or anything like that um i have no idea actually i mean um i don't watch the news anymore so <laughs> it's hard for me to tell on a on, on a big scale standpoint but um according to what i see uh, and we actually, I mean, that's the problem. We, we all live in, in small, uh, social bubbles, but according to what I see and the people I, 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 I live with, um, yeah, this, the meat is still there, but, uh, I would say the vegan or the um, vegetarian uh, movement is still pretty strong. And, yeah, I could see some arguments on, I mean, some ethical arguments, but to me, health comes first. Health should come first and should come um, before the ethic arguments. I'm not going to enter in this uh, difficult topic, but um, yeah, to answer your questions pretty clearly, um, yeah, I would say there, there, there's still the... The meat lovers, but um, on the side, yeah, there's there's quite a, quite a lot of uh, of vegans, vegetarians, and and people who are really really into into those kind of uh, of diet, which is to me really sad because they are suffering, they they are lacking of 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 nutrients. It's obvious, but how can we how can we tell them in a nice way so that they can they can change and and live better? Uh yeah, I mean, certainly, I've, I mean, even within this community, there are, there are several former plant-based people, veg, vegetarians, vegans that have sort of, I guess, reformed, if you will, and, and uh, have seen pretty remarkable improvements in their health. Um, with with your clients, you know, you said you can kind of you kind of look at them and see maybe they're maybe they're too too obese or they're they're, they're clearly infl inflamed or something like that. Do you get an idea of? I mean, do you do you deal with a lot of those that are coming from plant based backgrounds? Do you see a lot of vegetarians and that are that are also suffering from psychological disorders? Yeah, to me, I mean, that's what I wanted to to say um, twenty minutes ago, but uh, the conversation went on and on. But um, to me, um, if we're gonna be honest, then the client just tell tells us uh, everything and is really honest with the with the therapist or or the, or the doctor or whatever um, it's pretty obvious i mean many many clients um, who have uh, let's say a physical issue whatever it may be it could be a guts issue or some back pains or stuff like that anything even skin issues and stuff I'm guessing that a huge, a very high percentage of those people would suffer on the psychological side. And that's, I mean, I'm not going to enter in a, in a really difficult subject and, and my view or my understanding of total health, because that's my third uh, business project that I'm just starting. 
But my view is that we should kind of erase in their own explanation the concept of cause, causation. And to me, what lifestyle in the broadest and the best sense um, means is that we can work or improve um, people's health through different different entries, if I may say it like, like this. And that's, uh, and that's a pretty huge, uh, huge thing. So yeah, just to be clear and sum up, um, I think to me, if people are honest, if you suffer on the psychological side, you would pretty sure, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of chance that you would suffer on the physical standpoint. It's, it, it's just, I mean, some people may say it's just correlational and it's other stuff, but that's what, that's what I, I expect because that's what I, I've seen and, and I've seen and experienced uh, the opposite with me. So, yeah. Yeah, fair enough with that. Um, do you uh, find that, uh, you know, as far as, uh, do you, you know, this is something that I've seen, I've observed for sure. And I just want to see if you, you see it and maybe, maybe you don't have enough data yet, but um, when we talk about, you know, dietary strategies and a carnivore diet is one of many, obviously, and even within a carnivore diet, there's different ways to approach it. Some people will uh, use a very high fat ketogenic version. Some other folks tend to be more protein based like myself, typically. Uh, and then some people will add, like you said, a little bit of carbohydrate in there. Do you see different sort of strategies for different types of people? I mean, I, I, you know, in my view, I think people with, uh, uh, neuroinflammatory conditions, uh, uh, may do better on higher fat. There's some, I think there's some demographics that do better in different ways. And do you have a, a particular preference that you prefer or, or do you see yeah. a different need for different people? Yeah, it's only the start for me, but this topic is really interesting to me, and I really want to to invest my time and my my research into this. Uh, for me personally, but also obviously for my clients and the, and the people I can help. Um, but from my poor understanding, I would completely agree to, with you. Um, for me, what works best is. I would say an average amount of fat with a higher quantity of protein. Uh, and then obviously a little bit of carbs when I, when I do some really taxing, uh, taxing stuff uh, helps also. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I would say, but it, it's really interesting. And I, I, I couldn't say at, at this moment uh, so much more, but I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing what the reality uh, is showing to me. I mean, at least through my, my understanding and my vision, um, there are some different profiles that react differently uh, on, I would say, the carnivore spectrum. And it's interesting. It's interesting for my personal experience, but also for, for other people's experience. For example, my girlfriend, um, she has a yeah, different body than I do. Obviously, she's a, she's a girl. And I'm a boy, but um, but but she she, she tends to have um, a little bit more fat, and she puts on weight and on muscles as well because she's a former uh, professional tennis player, and she she has um, much more facility and and easiness to, to to gain weight and to put on weight and to and and to to build on muscles than me, so so it's different for her. And she has to moderate the, the amount of fat and protein and just eat a little bit less, which is the total opposite for me. I just have to eat way more. Yeah. For, and, and you mentioned she had had some significant improvements in, in her overall health. Would you mind sharing some of those? Yeah, obviously. Um, there's, there's so much. But um, yeah, her skin, her, her hair, her nails. Um, but also that that's important and I haven't mentioned it, uh, before for my personal experience. And that's really important for women, but also for men, um, on a aesthetical standpoint, uh, that's a huge improvement as well. Even people notice it when I walk on the street and especially for my girlfriends, my girlfriend, um, she's nicer. She's just more beautiful. Her skin is better. She's more colored, colorful. I don't know. It's a, 
she, it looks like she has more blood in her skin. I'm not sure I'm explaining, play, explaining it right, but, um, but that's, that's something else. She also have, um, yeah, obviously the glucose spikes, um, and, 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 the more energy, more motivation and all that stuff. That's obvious. I'm not going to tell, uh, tell, tell, uh, a lot of things about that again. But, um, another thing is, uh, appetite regulation. That's a huge, and especially for her, that, that's a, that's a huge improvement. And, and with her, her weight. It's so easy for her to lose weight or to at least to approach or try to be in the best uh, way she can be according to her standards on an aesthetic standpoint, stand view, but also on a physical performance standpoint, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you said she was a professional tennis player. Does she, and I don't know how old she is now, but I mean, does she still go out and play tennis or something? Does she do any recreational tennis or does she do a different sport now? Yeah, not much anymore. She used to to be um, uh, during her childhood and young adulthood, but now she's thirty years old, and she stopped for quite a few years. But she still does uh, a lot of sports. But she has different uh, ambitions and different goals than me. And ironically, I haven't been a professional anything in sports, but I'm a little bit more involved in sports now. And she does uh, still quite a lot, but not not those uh, really long and taxing. Uh, sessions uh, for example endurance it's more for for her fitness and her uh, and her enjoy- enjoyment i would say and has she found that eating carnivore has been helpful in, in her ability to perform yeah she's more in, in, into a ketogenic but uh, her base is uh, is a meat uh, i mean it's mainly meat and fish but uh, yeah yeah obviously yeah to answer you 100 percent fully agree so you said you're in Belgium. You're seeing uh, you're seeing psychology patients. Are you seeing them in person, or is it is it is it something that's uh, virtual? You know, or what? Or do you do both? Yeah, I do both, and I give keynotes as well uh, twice a month about uh, hypersensitivity and those people that feel to be different, but also about different topics that relates to the, to this. Um, and I give and I give group sessions as well. And on the side, I have the podcast that, that, that I, I launched uh, a few months ago. What are the, you know, maybe for somebody who wants to find that, maybe someone's listening and we may have some listeners from Belgium or, you know, perhaps. Do you do that in French, by the way, or is it all, is it English or in French? Yeah, most of my, um, I, mean, I mean, for the psychology and, um, and the podcast, it's, uh, it's mainly in French, but I've got some episodes of the podcast in, in English as well. Uh, and I will have much more in the future, so feel free to connect and and, and to and to share uh, if you, if you're interested in um, and in the psychology as well. Obviously, I'm more comfortable to to talk uh, and and go deep in, in in French, but I could be able um, in English. I've done it uh, several times in the past, so so it's makeable and uh, yeah, it, it, it's clearly doable. Excuse me. And, and just to give you another example, I haven't mentioned it, but uh, that's quite Im- important. For example, I had a, p- a patient, a client um, on the psychology that was really interested to do a podcast with me as well, just to share her experience and stuff. So I decided to, 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 to do it. And she was um, vegan, vegetarian for eight years, approximately eight, eight years, but like really strict. And in only three weeks, she changed radically to a, car- a pure carnivore diet. And her change, I mean, the changes were amazing. And she explains it in French, obviously, but um, uh, all her success story in, in my podcast. So that's, uh, that's another crazy, crazy good story. Yeah. And so and just for people listening, is there, an, is there a website or an, a name they would look for to find you? Yeah. Um, just, just simply put, um, all right, uh, Antoine Borel, my name and my family name in uh, the Google search, I would say. For the podcast, I have an Instagram page, Spotify, YouTube channel, and Apple podcast. And for the psychology and all the keynotes and the books I'm writing right now, um, it's, uh, I have a website. It's just my name, www.antoineborel.com. 
it's uh, the website is in French, but you can you can contact me in English, and there's no just, problem with that. Just just spell that out for people that, that maybe not yeah. know your last name, Antoine. And okay, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Anthony, but uh, in French, it's uh, it, it's spelled it's spelled A N T O I N E B O U R E L Antoine Borel dot com. Got it. That's okay. my website. Thanks for that. Antoine, unfortunately, we're out of time. I've got to go do uh, I've got to do a little consultation right now. But thank you for sharing this. It's interesting, and then hopefully we can get some more French speaking people on top of this stuff because I, I, you know, I think it's going to help everybody, no matter what language they speak. So thanks for doing that, and the rest of the folks, thanks for being here. Thanks, Ant- thanks, Antoine. Take care now. Sure. Thank you very much, Doctor Baker, yeah. and uh, have a have a nice day. All right. Bye bye. <laughs>